Hello everyone and welcome back to our new City Skylines 2 series, East Haven County. That's right, we've finally settled on a name for this uh, this new series. Most of you guys had New England coastline themed suggestions, which I think makes perfect sense. And basically this one suggestion from Ambrose pretty much sums up everything we need. So we've got East Haven County, which is a fictional county on the eastern shorelines of Massachusetts. And the county is primarily uh, composed of these Namos Islands that we see in the picture here. And on this primary island in the very center, we've got the city of Chowder Bay. Now, in the most recent episode of uh, East Haven County, we did some major port expansions to Chowder Bay, sort of separating the facilities into the older South Port and the more modern North Port area. Uh, we also did our best attempts at using the zoning techniques in game to create an actual old town uh, with some of the oldest, uh, oldest buildings and facilities in the city and a very, very small uh, off angle street grid. And in today's episode, we'll conduct some of the probably biggest infrastructure changes Chowder Bay is going to see in the foreseeable future. As we've got this uh, railway line here that we need to bring into the city, which is going to be quite a challenge because there's a very steep decline here. Uh, and we want this to serve freight rail to North Port as well as South Port, but also serve passenger train traffic to the actual city. So we'll need to establish a train station somewhere here and then probably grab the train line and bring it westwards so that it actually crosses this bridge and starts covering the adjacent islands. Before we start demolishing stuff left and right to actually try and accomplish this, uh, here's a friendly reminder to like this video if you enjoy my content and to consider subscribing if you don't want to miss out on future content or important votes or the likes. Most of my viewers aren't subscribed, but it's been getting a lot better recently, so thank you all. Now, if you remember the complex dilemma from the previous episode in bringing railway traffic into downtown Chowder Bay, as well as the ports, uh, is the fact that the main shipping lines of East Haven uh, County crosses underneath this uh, Douche Memorial Bridge. So the two bridges here have to have a certain height for that to actually be allowed within the game and realistically, of course, uh, which means that the decline uh, in percentage that is needed for this uh, rail track to actually go down to the town is like 11%. Um, and I'm not saying that that we try to do everything super realistic when I build cities, but that's probably just a bit too steep. Um, we're gonna go for a maximum of 4% for any one segment, which I think is like the maximum allowed in the US maybe, uh, but only used pretty rarely. Um, so we're, we're gonna need to solve that challenge first. As is so often the case though, you guys have come to my aid, because this is the city of Rendsburg in Germany. And this is the Rendsburger Hochbroche. I'm sorry to my German fans if I butchered that. Um, the, the cool thing here is that the bridge is actually really tall because of, as you can see by this container ship, it needs to allow for some pretty substantial shipping to actually cross underneath. And if we jump down to street level here, you can really see just how tall it is. And the challenge the engineers faced here is that the actual historic downtown of the city is very close to this bridge uh, and the station is placed right here and it's of course placed at grade so the way they solve this is basically that the railway line does a massive loop around what appears to be a normal residential area with some medium density and some low density stuff and then it crosses underneath itself basically and then it's pretty much at grade so that's basically what we're gonna attempt to do today we're going to have the railway tracks go underneath this highway and then do a bit of a loop so that it stretches alongside the uh, very edge of the coastline here and then hopefully we can create a realistic gradient percentage wise so that we can actually bring it into old town uh, into south port and north port 
And I'm thinking instead of having the train tracks run directly through these inner city areas, uh, I'm probably gonna let the train tracks run alongside Washington Street here. Uh, so we're basically just going to be extending the waterfront and having the railway lines go here and then they can uh, they can go east to actually serve uh, freight for the port areas and then they can go west uh, to some passenger train station somewhere around here.
All right, so let's take a little run through of what we've been uh, doing so far. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with how the loop turned out. It's uh, obviously a lot smaller than the uh, one from the German city we used as an example, but I am, you know, working with pretty limited uh, space here. So I'm pretty happy with how it turned out overall. And um, I'm trying to not terraform too much in this area because it is quite hilly. And it does make all the decisions we have to take and the outcomes uh, a little more interesting uh, and a little more organic feeling, I think at least. And we haven't actually destroyed all that much uh, yet, at least. We've done a bit of expansion here to Southport, uh, making it look quite interesting. It's got a lot more rail infrastructure now um, and a bit of an expansion to Northport as well here. Uh, let's see, we can actually just make a little adjustment there you go so uh, so far so good pretty happy with its outcome uh jumped into doing some uh, road expansions as well just to provide better access to and from the town and the port area in general and it's it's a little confusing it's a little messy and it looks quite american i think uh, those three things usually <laughs> go hand in hand um, so yeah, the transportation department had some money to blow, I guess. Uh, although this actually does lead me to a pretty important decision that I would really love you guys input on, because uh, as the you know as East Haven County grows and this series progresses, uh, it's probably not gonna continue to be feasible to have the main highway connection that runs through all these islands uh, actually turn into an avenue and become this you know. Uh, intersection rich uh, stretch of forest street uh, it should probably go uninterrupted through the town of chowder bay um, i guess my question is whether we should elevate the four lane highway so that it runs above forest street or if we should spend the extra money and actually do our own version of the boston uh, big dig and then kind of make it go underneath forest street so we'll have a tunnel that kind of starts here and uh exit somewhere over here that's a possibility as well um what do you guys think i'd be very interested to hear what you guys feel would be the appropriate uh, solution for our city anyways we've of course got much more infrastructure work to get done and i think the next one is going to be placing the passenger train station somewhere in chowder bay and normally I wouldn't be able to place the train station without first placing the rail yard, which is a great annoyance to me because not only is the rail yard a massive complex asset that you really want to dedicate like a highly detailed area to, uh, but it doesn't feel re super realistic that you have to place this up front, especially since if you want to go for like a historical style city where you have, uh, you know, uh, train tracks very early on and train stations early on then the city might be quite small and the rail yard is just so massive so what i've done to fix this is download and use the historical start mod by algonon which amongst other cool fixes enables me to place train stations without actually having to place the rail yard i can really recommend this mod because it also allows you to uh, zone uh, your farming stuff uh, right from the get-go at the very start of your city which i it's such an odd choice that that's actually not available in the vanilla game the train station is quite a beefy boy asset wise so we're definitely gonna have to uh, do a little demolition derby here i'm gonna remove parts of myrtle rich which i should probably rename as you guys have been suggesting um, then we'll remove these three small roads and we're gonna have to remove uh, parts of Elk Street as well, I feel. If I can get this to work. No? Oh, this is so awkward. This is why I just prefer to jump into developer mode and say bypass validation results. Because then I'll actually just be allowed to delete the road as I should. Anyways, let's see if we can place this. So this is uh, a bit too steep. So we are going to have to move it a bit further inland. Just going to do a little more demolition stuff here. Let's see if we can we can do a little smoothing of the terraforming here. 
and then maybe place the train station so that it's right next to this park facility out front. Blop. Everyone is happy with public transport. Yay, America. So we're going to have to connect up the train uh, lines here so that we can actually get some traffic in here. That's the first step, of course. I'm probably just going to see if I can... Can I disable all snapping and just drag this out a bit to give us a bit more space? And then we can enable all snapping and connect up to probably the one that is the furthest away here. As such. And then we'll grab this track here. And see if we can create a... Yeah, that's a pretty good looking connection. And here I'm thinking maybe a bit of an interesting connection with some one laners here. And, and you know, when you check this, all of it looks pretty all right. It's not like it's, it's too crazy looking, but none of this would have been a would have, would have been a possibility without the uh, bypassing of the validation. So that's why I like to play with it. It just gives me a little more freedom and it allows me to uh, pretty much be my own judge on whether I think something is a little too crazy or not, which I much prefer. And we might as well just add a, a little connection here to the port. And like this is once again uh, something that, as you guys can see, it wouldn't be possible in valid shape overlapping items, but with uh, validation bypassing, it's super easy. So the next tricky part is going to be bringing the railway lines through the town so that we can actually start connecting it up to the other islands. But I think uh, I think the first thing we're going to do is actually just create our very first route because we can connect up to our outside connection. This is uh, this is directly north. So as we move uh, further north here, I guess we're going to get to uh, New Hampshire and Maine, if my US geography isn't completely out of tune. Uh, and it seems that the the city uh, adjacent to us, Northwards, is Shaftsbury. So we'll add a connection here and we are going to move back and complete our line. And ideally, as we start expanding East Haven County, we'll have train stations studded throughout these islands, allowing for some uh, pretty awesome passenger train uh, transportation options. And I was considering doing a big tunnel section here, but I think given the current size of Chowder Bay, that's just a bit too complex and expensive an option. So we are going to have to demolish a bunch of stuff and then just uh, run the train lines through much of the town here. And I'm gonna go for the um, the, the parallel mode here. Uh, awesome tool to work with, but I think I should probably work on smoothing the terrain just a bit. So I'm gonna right click. Let's see. We'll make this brush a little bigger. Use our slope terrain tool to right click up here, and then just drag up so that we've got a bit more of a slopey incline here. Otherwise, it's gonna it's gonna look pretty funky. So let's see, we're gonna go for our parallel mode and then continuous curve tool. And I think we're pretty good to go. And then of course, just some pretty smooth curves. And we'll go all the way over here. And then what I think I'm gonna do is just go grab this two way train track and then upgrade uh, this track here just to add a bit of yeah make it a bit more interesting basically and then it's also gonna be pretty easy hopefully to just oh i'm gonna remove parallel mode i'm just gonna drag out segment here and bring these together as such let's see if we can connect connect up to the station here seems like the terraforming did a good job there we go and this is looking a little weird so i'm probably gonna see if i can create like split this segment into two i could uh, and then just drag it out get a perfect curvature here 
and the very same thing with this segment here and that does look a bit odd i'm gonna try that again uh, maybe it's gonna be easier with just a single track here that usually uh, usually usually is a little easier that's fine then we're gonna upgrade just another segment or another stretch uh, like this of course, with this in place, we're going to have to connect up both halves of the city once more with some more at grade crossings uh, and probably do a bit of an adjustment to some of the road layouts here as the, the train tracks aren't necessarily the first thing that was placed here, but probably among the very first. Uh, so some of the roads are going to have to be, you know, it's going to have to be a little more obvious that they were built afterwards and not beforehand. Uh, so I'm going to have to work a bit on this area and we're also going to need some good connections down here uh, so that you've got easy access to this part of the city. Uh, pro we're probably going to have a lot of at grade crossings. I don't think that's going to be uh, avoidable, but I think that's fine. It's 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 OK. And I think I'm going to go ahead and actually unlock roundabouts, which might be called rotaries in New England or Massachusetts. Not really sure. And they're probably not too prevalent um, in general in the US, of course, but in some states more than others. But I'm going to use them uh, throughout the, the city. It's going to be a, a thing here in East Haven County, uh, one of the many, many European influences we've got in this region. So let's see. Hmm, we can start with Butler Street, which was uh, mercilessly cut in half. <laughs> so it's now got a partner over here called Hitter Street. And we can probably do a bridge here. So let's see, the lowest we can go is probably 875 without the game going too crazy. Yep. And then we have to go down, of course. I guess the question is whether we should probably disconnect this segment here so we can get a bit of a, a smoother gradient. 6.5 is pretty good. And then we'll have to connect it over here and 6.5 is probably not achievable. But we can do 8.2, which should be okay as well. And then if we move to this southern corner of the city, the outskirts of the city, uh, Cedar Street has been cut off from Forest Street and probably just going to do an at grade crossing here actually. Like this. So that is two major crossings already done. If we move eastwards towards downtown, we're going to need a crossing here as well. And maybe we can do a bit of trickery here on Magic Rider. So let's just elevate to 875 again and then see if we can go straight above the train station. And have a bit of a curvature as well maybe something like this or this right let's see where the pillars are placed that works out quite fine just kind of kind of laps into the train station a bit but i think that's fine shouldn't be much of an issue and then we'll of course see if we can actually get a, a decent drop here that isn't too crazy 10.4 we can get a 9.5 maybe if i just squeeze this a bit 9.5 let's see how that actually looks <laughs> okay this is, yeah i'm just gonna try and redo that
And I think we are really starting to get there with all the recent infrastructure implementations. I like these bridges as well, and I'm really, really starting to break away from the grid as well, which just gives an overall much more interesting look to the city. And I think it's time we start kind of fixing up some of the some of the areas that we've kind of wrecked or destroyed uh, with all this new pavement and asphalt going going into place. And we'll start with our uh, historic row house district of Myrtle Ridge. And I think the first thing we're going to do is renaming it, renaming it because I wasn't quite happy with this name. Uh, and I'm going to go with this suggestion for Sailor's Row. Which I think is really cool um, but I'm actually gonna go with this suggestion for the actual backstory of uh, or the story of Sailor's Row rather so it's kind of considered the housing district for the industries that were built with the addition of the new piers down the harbor uh, old town kind of precedes the the piers actually so that's why Sailor's Row is built uh, a bit a bit back and the reason I'm not naming it pier heights is well, if you recall from the previous episode, I say peer uh, differently each time, so I'm going to try and avoid that word. <laughs> Anyways, let's just uh, adjust Sailor's Row to uh, kind of highlight the new, uh, the new boundaries of the district. We'll just align it with the train tracks here. We'll uh, do something like this. And then, of course, we'll need to kind of expand it, actually, so that it goes all the way to the train tracks and I'm thinking we might just have an alley road from up here be the very edge of it and be um, um, let's wait 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 we're gonna do the terraforming first right clicking here to bring out this level and then right clicking up here to do the same and I'm gonna take the slope terrain tool I'm gonna right click here and then slope up and that should hopefully make this terrain a little easier to work with. Then we're going to grab our alley and see if we can just go all the way down here. Something like this. And might as well just turn this into a, a key so that this small fence is automatically added. We don't really want... And I'll do the same here. We don't really want people to just wander off onto the train tracks at random. No need for that. And then we're just going to grab our regular two lane roads and we're just going to continue their path. They're at off angles, all of these roads, which is part of what makes Sailor's Row a little interesting. It's not a finely tuned grid something like this and i don't think i don't want any housing on these streets uh, i want the same theme to kind of continue so we're gonna use this um key technique as well just add it and remove it sorry here of course and then just remove it afterwards that really does help with uh, our zoning needs So this is basically what we want. I'm gonna add the key here as well. And that should be it. Great. Let's go grab our uh, North American medium density housing and do our zoning. Gonna refrain from zoning this these tiles here until these have actually grown because otherwise I, I risk getting uh, row houses at odd angles. And of course, the cool thing here is that the assets can extend underneath uh, these elevated segments of Lafayette Street. And something like this. Uh, let's just let it all grow. We're going to go for the same uh, structure with our roads where we've got one side that has dedicated parking and the other side has planters and trees instead. Something like this, and we don't want people parking alongside Oak Street at all, actually. So we're just gonna cover that up as well. And with Sailor's Row growing, we're gonna move a bit west. Uh, we haven't named any of these areas out here. I haven't even designated them as uh, districts yet. 
Uh, but we'll we'll start out by just adding in some housing out here. And as you might remember, I'm going to leave a bit of space between um, most of these lots just to allow for the, the trees to actually poke through and maintain this very uh, green look we've basically got going. Green theme almost. So yeah, I'm just going to just simply going to continue doing that. And it's probably time that I start mixing in a few uh, European assets as well, just to get uh, a more diverse look. The single-family housing, I find you can you can more or less use both themes uh, without too much trouble. They uh, they fortunately don't look too distinct. At least I feel that way, and we gotta remember that you know the kind of the, the story for. East Haven County as well is that it's got lots of European influences, a very old city. And I just realized that we don't actually have any like low rent housing offering anymore because we demolished our public housing project to make room for the for the railway lines. Uh, so maybe we'll just need to zone a bit of that, see if I can if I can find a spot, some low rent housing, yeah. Uh, let's see what we can do. Maybe a 4x3 or a 4x4. Should have room for that actually. So maybe something like this. We'll see if we've got the... Seems like we've got the demand at least for a small housing project up here. And we've still got some medium density. Uh, demand so it's gonna allow us to do a bit of extra zoning gonna sprinkle in some medium density amongst the row houses but generally just adding some row houses wherever, wherever i can we got some uh free lots here some medium density as well maybe even a three by three medium density here and a bit of extra row housing and all this extra zonage should help us densify chowder bay downtown just a bit don't want to do too much i i still want lots of low density commercial and even some houses to kind of poke through i uh, just create a bit of a a bit more of an interesting cityscape now demand wise uh what chowder bay really needs is uh, more workplaces and there's uh, a few obvious open spots where we can uh, where we can zone some stuff hoping we can get two uh, big grocery stores here but it is gonna require an actual expansion with some new industrial districts or a new port or something like that to really satisfy it um, but that's gonna be for another episode and i'm pretty sure that we're actually gonna need to build the rail yard to actually have trains spawn unfortunately so while we can build the train station and plan out the routes we're gonna have to build the rail yard to actually see the traffic and the routes being activated so we're gonna have to build this massive rail yard in uh, in not too long at least um, it's gonna be uh, very relevant when we start branching out to the other islands as well so we can connect this uh, so we can create this commuter rail network but with that said and done i think that's a wrap for this episode it's been a ton of fun to create this infrastructure and some of it looks super messy and wonky and weird and that's just the way i like it it's uh yeah it's it's really fun to work with the tool sets in this game and if you have uh, bypass validation on through the developer mode then you can really feel the power of the network controls in the game as well uh, like I said, the, the big question I would love you guys' feedback and input on is whether we should take the uh, this highway here and either bury it on the ground through a tunnel system or if we should elevate it and run it uh, above Forest Street and, you know, just generally have it continue as an elevated segment throughout the entire island. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for the feedback, the support, all the nice suggestions as you can kind of feel from this episode hopefully i really do read as many comments as i can and use as many suggestions as i can as well uh, so i'm very happy that we've got uh the the series and the city and the islands and all that stuff named now it's good to have that in place 
I'm gonna shoot some uh, final cinematics for you guys now and I really hope to see you in the next one uh, and of course I hope you've had a fantastic uh, holiday season with your family friends and loved ones and that you will have a, a nice and safe New Year's Eve as well thank you so much goodbye